All right, hello and welcome to another expert inside interview. My name is John Gunn from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Rudy Segovia, who is in lovely Chicago, Illinois today. How are you doing, Rudy? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, and as you said, it's sun, summer's arrived in Chicago. Uh, yeah, in a big way, in yes. In a big way. And I'm here in San Diego, and people think it's summer all year round in San Diego. Well, it normally is, but not this year for some reason. We have finally, our summer's finally arrived here too. Oh, so yes, okay. I know everybody heart bleeds for me because we've had a couple <laughs> of bad months in San Diego. I know you're all upset about it. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yes. All right. Well, um, Rudy is um, he's a 30 year veteran of the direct sales industry and he is a success trainer. And what we wanted to talk to you about today, Rudy, is this thing called your passport to success. So what do you mean by your passport to success? After I retired from sales mm -hmm. and because I don't have grandchildren, I decided to travel the world. Well, that got old and got tired. And so I decided to start a training seminar for direct salespeople that are multi-level people also, uh, any any kind of sales that is direct mm -hmm. to the consumer. And, and I did it because when I started in sales, there was very little help. And I remember how lost I was in front of customers. Mm -hmm. And I know that a lot of people go through that. So I decided to, to start a seminar system that teaches people on how to network, how to answer objections, how to do Facebook, how to you know, close a sale, how to get referrals, and all of those things. And so I have traveled in the U.S. and in Mexico, both in English and in Spanish. Mm -hmm. I do my training seminars. So that's interesting. So is there, uh, when, you do, when you do it in the U.S. and you do it in Mexico, is there any differences between the way people sell in Mexico and sell in the U.S.? Or is there fundamentals that hold true regardless of where you are? Well, there's some fundamentals that hold true. But in places where you have to do financing, Mexico would be much mm -hmm. different, a much different sure. arrangement. It's more of a layaway type of plan over there. Gotcha. But we're really talking about setting the appointments, you know, answering the objections, using your sales closing during your presentation so that when you get to the end, there is no sales close. It's already done. People are ready to order something. So how do you, so how do, you do that? How do you, how do you build into your process so that you're closing from the beginning and not closing at the end? Okay, first, I sell them on sales. Mm -hmm. Why? Because sales, and a little, a little bit about my background. Yes, please. I come from a family of migrant farm workers. And uh, my father and mother spent 20 years in the fields, picking cotton and working in the potato fields. When we came to Chicago, I, my first job was in a factory. And it was actually Zig Ziglar. Only one quote from him changed my life. And, the, and that's the quote of, you are where you are, you are what you are because of what has gone into your mind. You can change what you are, you can change where you are by changing what goes into your mind. And at that time, I was thinking, well, what am I? I'm, I'm, I'm the son of a migrant farm worker, and I'm in a factory where I'll hopefully stay here the rest of my life. So if I put something in different in my mind, will I do differently? And you know what? I took that to heart, and I did it. I started applying for different things, and before I knew it, I was getting promoted and getting jobs, and, and that changed my life. But I knew I needed training. Mm -hmm. and sales, sales was my vehicle that got me out of poverty. Now, and when I say out of poverty, I, you know, I'm one of those guys that's blessed and you know, lucky, blessed that um, I reached financial freedom, and I retired almost nine years ago. Oh. And what I do desperate to success is, is my fun things to do but I don't have to do it. My goal was to do one seminar a month. <laughs> and, and, and so what it is is that salespeople may need to hear a story first to be sold on selling. And once you say, yes, this is what I want to do, then let's get you to the professional level at whatever it is that you're selling. And you'll be surprised how many people do not know about their own product. They think they just open the book and show it and people are going to jump in and buy it. Well, there's a lot more to, to it. And that's why I started it, was to help people in sales because I knew how much help I needed when I started, and it wasn't there. So it's interesting. One thing I want to pick up on what you just said there is uh, selling people on selling, right? Getting them interested in selling. Because let's face it, uh, sales has never been a career that people, it's a career that a lot of people default into, right? It's not a career that a lot of people choose. And most people, it's like if you're, 
if your kid suddenly says, oh, I want to be a salesperson when I grow up, you you know, most, <laughs> most parents would be saying, oh, I don't think that's a great, you know, try something else over here. So when you say selling people on, on, on sales in the first place, uh, talk a little bit more about that. Well, that's exactly why I do it because of what you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. you know, people, some people think that selling is something you do in between jobs, yeah. you know, for mm -hmm. little income, something until I find something, I'm going to get some sales. But when I show them, there's people in sales that earn you know, forty, fifty thousand dollars a month, where some lawyers and some doctors don't even make that much sure. after all their education. Mm -hmm. When I show them that when you have a product that whatever it is that it's a win-win, people need it. It's going to help them. It's going to save them money. It's going to take care of their health. It's going to whatever it's going to do for them. That's a good thing. And then that's also good. See, I was selling just like Zig Ziglar. I was selling cookware and water filters, door-to-door, -door, commission only. Mm -hmm. Now, I guarantee you, there was no morning that I woke up and say, oh, great, I get yeah. to sell cookware today. <laughs> no, I looked at the future and I say, if I do this many steps, I will get to this level. And at this level, people are earning half a million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. And that's what, what that's what took me, you know, get it, got me up in the morning to go and show my product. So it's really selling them on the dream because it is true and it is real. There is tons, tons of people, and we don't have enough time to tell all my stories, but mm -hmm. one thing is, from a car salesman, when I started to make it a little bit in sales, I went to buy a luxury car, Right. and I got the best lesson from a car salesman, mm -hmm. and, and then that salesman went on to open up his own dealership. He contributed like $5 million to one of our local schools, so, so there's a lot of money in sales if, if you become a professional in what you're selling. Yeah, but it's interesting you say that uh, because, and it's interesting about that that idea of of sales. I mean, it's like nobody has a problem with somebody saying they go into marketing, for instance, right? But yet, you know, ninety percent of marketing graduates, their first job is not in marketing; it's in sales, right? So, and I think that that idea you ha um, something you touched on there as well is this idea of you know maybe you didn't wake up every morning saying, "Wow, I'm going to sell cookware today." That's fantastic. We live in a culture today where people almost expect to get the the reward before they put in the hard work, right? So yes. do you find that you have to kind of remind people that, you know, it's a journey, success is a journey. It's not an, it's not an overnight thing. There's no shortcuts. There's no silver bullet or pill you can take to make yourself successful. Well, the first thing I do is I learn about that company's compensation plan because I like to compare. I show my whole story, you know, for, for, for people. But I show them how in the industry that I was in, no matter what level I reached, the next year I started at zero and had to produce the same thing to stay at my level. Mm -hmm. Where in most companies, you don't. You stay where you're at and you just keep going mm -hmm. forward. And, and so I show how even in my difficult times and without the technology that we have today, I mean, when we got that beeper, I was so excited. It was a way to communicate. The beeper was like my, it was just a beautiful technology that it was like the best, changed my life. Well, today we have so many tools. The thing is that people, uh, I, I think some salespeople expect to, people want your product and you really have to explain the benefits to them without seeming like even like salesy mm -hmm. and the benefits. And then it's, it's up to them. But by the time you're finished, they're pretty much going to decide to buy something. Yeah. Well, it's, in, it's interesting as well. You say that uh, to, I mean, people, Despite the fact that people have so much information nowadays, you know, as buyers and stuff, you know, it's almost like too much information. People are overloaded or whatever. There's still a place for the salesperson who can really help you understand, as you said, what the benefits of the product are, because it's hard for people. It's like even today, if you look at um, the way things have gone uh, when reviews first started online, everybody was great. Now we've got independent third-party reviews of everything and we can make a decision. Now you can't tell whether they're fake. And, right. and right. those 50% of them are good and are 100% are, are five-star great. And then 50% of them are one-star. And you're like, well, how am I supposed to know? Who's telling the truth? <laughs> so I, I still need a salesperson to be able to get in and, and explain the benefits to me. Right. Well, that's true. And especially today that... People can double check your information in an instant by going to a Google or you know mm -hmm. whatever it is to find. So in the past, you know it was people we would say something about a benefit to a, of a product and they would kind of question it. They would say, well, really does that really work that way? Is that? Mm -hmm. And now they can prove it to themselves like right. immediately. 
Exactly. It's, it's a lot easier to sell today than other times, but it's still selling. There's still techniques about, you know, when, when you make a first in, a good first impression to your sales closes that don't seem like sales closes throughout your presentation. And at the end, very softly, see which package they want, A, B, or C. And it's funny you say that about making a, a, a good first impression, because again, I come back to this thing that today people have gotten very casual, they've gotten very familiar, and they think that all those old rules don't apply anymore. So it's almost like I can I can email you and go, hey, Rudy, it's John from Pipeline, as if we're, as if we're lifelong friends instead yeah. of like, I've never met you before. Um, right. And so a lot of those um, people are people are assuming a lot of familiarity and being very casual and all of that. And to me, that doesn't create the best first impression. And I think you can differentiate yourself today if you're a lot more professional than the others. Exactly. And there's actually rules for that mm -hmm. as far as even the way you shake somebody's hand. Now, what happens is when a, when a person sees you for the first time, you know, they're gonna, there's some judging involved. Mm -hmm. Sure. And if, if you make a good first impression everything's going to go easier. Now you can still make a sale. If you make a bad first impression, mm -hmm. you, you drop something, you break something in the house, <laughs> but you can still sell, but it's going to be tougher. Right. So, so that first impression is very important. And, you know, I, I agree with you that today's time's a little bit different. You know, people want everything fast. They, and so when you organize yourself, not to be so over informative, mm -hmm. that also you can actually talk your way out of a sale. Right. By giving them too much. Mm -hmm. so the thing is, you point out the main benefits. And when you're in front of that customer, what is that interests them the most? And you capitalize on those on those interests. Yeah. And it's uh, and, and again, um, we'd like to come back to again what you were saying about the idea of closing from the start. Right. Um, so how how do you how do you integrate that into how you approach a sale? Well, see, if, if you're. If you and I are selling the same product, mm -hmm. chances are we're both going to lose a sale by a different objection. Right. Yours, yours might be a money objection. Well, it's too expensive. Okay. And so for you, we would you would work harder at when you show a benefit of saving money, You add, then you ask him, you know, Mr. Golden, can you see how this would save you money? Mm -hmm. well, if, if they don't see it, you haven't explained it correctly. Sure. Yep. And yep. that's why you get in a money objection. Can you see that? Yes. This, do you like saving money? And when would you like to start saving money? And mm -hmm. so this is like little closes that you go throughout the presentation and, uh, and they work because people are, especially when you come to the close, you know what I like to do is I like to set the wife and the husband together because the product was an expensive product. Mm -hmm. So I need them to be happy. I don't want them fighting sure. about, the, about the decision. But I just simply say, Mr. Jones, which of the products are interest, uh, um, which of the products that you like the most? And they'll say, well, I like the product A. And why is that? Because of this. And why is that important to you? Oh, because I can see where I could benefit. And see, and the wife is listening to him saying, I want that because it's going to help me do this, do that, do that. And then I ask the same thing to the wife. And now they don't have to discuss it between them because they made a decision that they like it. Mm -hmm. They both. And so it becomes it's still a sales close, but it's so soft. They don't even know that they're, they're being closed. Mm -hmm. So what do you think are some of the things uh, or do you think uh, uh, some of the ways sales have changed today? Like when you're out there doing your your seminars and talking with salespeople, are there any things that you're you're noticing that you say, hmm, that's different? Anything that I'm saying? Anything that you're seeing and, we'll you're, see. and you're thinking, okay, I can see sales is changing a bit. Well, yeah, of course. The technology has made a big difference in the way we sell today. And, and also in the presentations, you know, we don't, you know, before it used to be booklets and things, mm -hmm. that, that is almost, people get bored by doing that. You want to create a, a relationship, but if you don't have a sales position that you have a callback that you need to make the sale the same day, mm -hmm. and you have to work towards the sales close right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And that is by being with a good first impression, by being friendly. You know, the first thing I do when I come to people, I take my shoes off. They don't ask me to take them. I just take them off. You know why? Because cleaning the floor is work. Mm -hmm. And if you come in with dirt or snow, you don't know about snow. You know, no. you always, there's, there's snow. <laughs> you know, people appreciate right away. They oh, you know, they don't say anything, but you can see that they're happy. Mm -hmm. 
you do those little things, you know, the compliments, the uh, true compliments, no phony compliments yep. about their, you know, could be their home, could be their kids, could be their trophies, whatever it is. And, and they make a small conversation with them. And you will see how that goes a long way. Yeah, no, ab- absolutely. Well, Rudy, we're nearly at the end of our time. But be- before we go, I'd love you to just share a little bit more about yourself and how people can learn more about you. Well, you can see me at uh, my website, Rudy segovia.com there's just some information there i'm starting to put some videos on youtube uh, both in english and in spanish Excellent. and only because i've been pressured into it i don't <laughs> when i do seminars i don't do podcasts because i want to see people in front of me mm-hmm. i want them to practice in front of me i want to put them and so i i haven't done any podcast but uh who knows that might change right now it's all i get hired by companies to and they bring their salespeople. I had a multi-level company that had 500 people in a, in a Holiday Inn. That was way too many people to do a, a <laughs> training seminar. But I did more of a motivational talk and things, and they were very happy with it. And so you can get a hold of me or my phone number, 312-804-5050. My email is info at rudysegovia.com. And if you have a question, and if I can help you with something, just give me a call. Excellent. Listen, thanks, Rudy. This has been a pleasure talking with you. And maybe you'll come back again and talk to us soon. Uh, I have a long story to tell you. Yeah, I know. And you have a lot of stories. So, yeah, maybe we'll bring you back and we'll talk some more. Beautiful. Okay. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.